Hello and welcome back to my channel, What If Deku 2 Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 3 of our series, What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku and Had Harim? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Guy Number 23 from Fanfiction Net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Another night, another waking up covered in sweat, another dissolved set of bed sheets. It would be embarrassing, but at that rate, she would need to ask her parents to send her the old acid proof sheets. She didn't use them since the kindergarten, but the situation called for drastic measures. It was bad enough that she had to come back up with the old habit of sleeping without clothes, and Ashido wasn't going to buy a new set of sheets every time she dreamed with the boy. She didn't want to dream with him in any circumstance anyways, but damn, the boy was ripped, and she couldn't help but wonder how hard his body felt to the touch. If only he could use all that strength with her. Ah, stop right there Ashido, get yourself together girl. Jumping to the class time, Midoriya was present in the classroom, but his mind was way far from there, which earned him not one but three warnings from Aizawa, and at least seven are you feeling well, directed to his person. The teen just said sorry to his teacher and waved away the worries of his classmates, but his mind kept racing and revolving around his current situation. Midoriya had Yuraka as his girlfriend, but at the same time Hagakure, Asui and Jiro confessed their love for him, in the most uncanny way possible. Wait a moment, Yuraka confessed in the same way too. What did Midoriya ever do to get this much attention? Okay, they all agreed that he was cute, probably due to his shy nature, but come on, that can't be enough to make them go crazy over him like this. Sure, his workouts seemed to pay off besides making his body able to handle one for all. That said he was sure that he fitted the definition of ripped and all, but it didn't seem enough reason for four girls apparently falling in love with him. Not that he didn't like it, he was damn happy because Yuraka felt the same for him that he felt for her. It was just unsettling that in a short period of time, the girls around him were one by one coming after him, desperate to satiate their, um, womanly urges, and why only him? Midoriya was sure that his friends had many attractive traits. Anyway, that was kind of beyond the point. Instead of trying to deny to himself that a group of girls had the hots for him, Midoriya decided to focus on something more important, and no, it's not the class going on. No sir, the next on his list of I need to explain things was Ashido Mina. This time he would plan far ahead enough to predict what she would choose between spaghetti or chicken on lunch. Yes, this time there would be no space for errors, no more crazy girls over Midoriya Izuku. He was also feeling positive this time. All the girls seemed to be very comprehensive and forgiving, plus it had to be a limit of how many girls would be eager to get down with him if only he knew. Doria, Midoriya. Huh, what? He got brought back to earth as someone put a hand on his shoulder and shook him a little bit. Looking at the clock his eyes widened as it was already time for the hero training. He had been so deep in thought that he just missed the entire class. Hopefully he could catch up with Ida or Yuraka. Scratch that, Ida was way safer if he really wanted to get notes and notes only. But the one to wake him up from his self-induced trance was none other than his actual target Ashido. She had a worried face directed towards him, and looking around he noticed that no one was in the class besides the two of them, meaning that she waited for him to leave. Shaking his head slightly he put up a smile on his face and got up from his seat. Dude, are you alright? You totally zoned out there. Oh yes, I'm fine. I just got lost in thought. I get it, that last math question almost made my brain jam. Yeah, I guess so, he didn't have a single idea of what she was talking about. Anyway, we should go already, or else we'll be late to the training. Oh right, let's go. While they went to the locker rooms, Midoriya decided to start some level of interaction already, just to test where he was at with the pink-skinned girl. Um, Ashido-san, why were you at the class back there? I mean, usually you go together with Hagakure and Asui, right? 
Oh, that, I, um, I forgot to take something then I came back and you were still there so. Oh, I see. Well, thanks anyway. Don't mention it. At least she was being friendly. He wondered if she was even capable of keep a cold treatment for a long time, given her friendly nature. There was just no person that she didn't at least became friends with. And so came the hero training class. Today the mission would be a race with obstacles to save the victim. Today's victim was none other than Midnight, and Cementos would be providing the obstacles with his quirk, creating a constantly changing course, forcing the students to adapt quickly to the present situation. They would be split in five teams of four. The results ended with Ida, Siro, Bakugu, Midoriya, and Asui being the top five on the class, in that order. Aizawa dismissed them and Midoriya headed to the dorms and right to his room, where he stayed for the rest of the afternoon, thinking about his approach on Ishido. He passed the details and possible outcomes over and over again, searching for the smallest of the flaws, perfecting his master plan. He was so focused that he ended skipping his daily workouts, which his cell phone remembered him through an alarm. Not feeling hungry at all, Midoriya decided to use the gym since he was free of homework today. As he passed by the common room, he grabbed an apple from a bowl on one of the tables as he headed to the gym with a towel over his shoulder. He really felt proud of the work he did under All Might's coaching at the beach, after all the place was a dump before and he managed to clean it practically by himself, but he couldn't deny that using the installations of you, they were just awesome to use. At this gym they had so many different equipments that he could spend the entire day here without using the same twice, not to count the equipment specialized for the most diverse quirks. Last time he checked they were installing some kind of wall treadmill for adherence quirks. And so Midoriya started with his usual training. He always started from the basics, some push-ups and jumping jacks to warm up, then working on the muscles of his legs, usually a lot of squats. Next was the midsection, with some sessions of sit-ups and abdominal crunches while he was hanging on a bar with his legs. After that, his chest and arms, the part where he focused more, given his main style of combat. Midoriya did lots of push-ups, sometimes even managing to make them while lifting his body on a vertical line. His sections of bench press had very heavy weights, considering his own size, and even the ones he used on biceps curls seemed extremely disproportionate to the teen. And what was most impressive, Midoriya looked like a machine, making every move with precision to prevent any harm and make the most of the exercises. Even his pauses for rest were timed. After two good hours at the gym, Midoriya ended his training routines and headed to the locker room of the gym while he emptied the bottle he got in the way to there. Midoriya always felt proud of himself after working out. The burning sensation on his muscles and the heavy breathing were signs of his efforts. Not only that, day after day he felt that he could control his quirk slightly better. Bit by bit, he would control the full extent of the power given to him, and then he would be the best hero in the world, just like his idol and mentor. The thought still made him laugh and smile. If someone told him that he would be chosen by All Might to be his successor one year ago, he would think it was a really bad taste joke, even though it was his dream. That said, he knew that he had a long path to follow, but that didn't discourage him on the opposite, it gave him strength to keep going, keep pushing his limits. My limits, huh? Another thing that changed in his life was the fact that he had lots of friends now who he could count on any time. And most of all, he had a very special someone that felt the same way for him. And the thought of Yuraraka brought to his mind the plan he was formulating earlier. By his estimates, he would be ready to act in two days tops. He had to make sure that everything happened as expected, and then he revised it again while he let the cold water refresh his body. He then turned on the hot water, not wanting to catch a cold. The warmth washed away all the tiredness of his body and mind, and for a moment he didn't worry about the three girls after him, or with the two that he still had to talk with. Midoriya even considered leaving things solve themselves, but there was always the possibility that it could last much more than he expected. Fie, should I just go to her and jump to the part where we suck each other? Midoriya shook away this thought from his mind when suddenly the lights of the locker room went off, surprising him. 
He turned the hot water closed and looked around, calling for anyone who could be there. Hello? Hey guys, I'm still in the shower, Kaminari-kun, this is not funny at all. Deciding to just ignore the little prank, Midoriya reached for his towel and wrapped it around his waist, going to where the light switches were. He walked across the corridor of lockers, the fog of the hot water making it even harder to see in the dark. He reached the door of the lockers where the switches were and ran his hand on the wall to find them, but he felt something strange when his hand landed on it. They seemed distorted and were somehow glued to each other because he could not press them. Ha ha, very funny guys, come on, I still need to change. Not hearing any sign of his classmates, Midoriya let out another slightly frustrated sigh as he reached for the door knob, only to find out that it was missing. Huh? What is this? On closer inspection, the knob seemed to have melt away, which made him think of Todoroki, but it wasn't like him to play pranks. Maybe Kaminari could do it, but if he did then he would be short-circuited by now. He could always have some help though. A very faint noise caught Midoriya's attention, which made him go on alert state automatically. It couldn't be a villain, could it? He slowly walked through the lockers, sharpening his senses while he navigated in the middle of the thin fog of the hot water, and then he heard the faint and wet sound of footsteps. This atmosphere ended getting the best of him, messing up his logic. It couldn't be a villain, he was sure of it, but if so, who or what was lurking around? Something in the back of his mind was saying that he didn't want to find out. Suddenly, a shadow appeared on a corner for a brief moment, which made the boy stop dead on his tracks. He had to hold his breath to avoid a small squeal from escaping his mouth, and when he heard the footsteps coming back, he immediately turned around and went to the opposite direction. It was stronger than him. He sneaked around the lockers, trying to avoid whatever was coming, and after circling two of the locker rows, he was sure it was following him, which made him panic a bit. The footsteps suddenly came really close and fast, so he entered into one of the lockers as quiet as he could and waited in there, looking at the darkness outside by the little slits on it, when the shadow passed by. He had to cover his mouth to hold that scream, and his heart beated faster when the shadow walked back, stopping right in front of the locker he was. Midoriya even held his breath and pushed his back on the end of the locker. Only a minute after the shadow moved again, the now terrified teen allowed himself to release his breath and get away from the locker. Not hearing any sound, Midoriya decided that he would just kick the door open and tell to someone from the school staff later. He walked to the bench where he left his change of clothes, but something seemed off. He looked up very slowly, as if he moved too fast, whatever was in front of him would jump at his neck and tear it open. And then, nothing. Midoriya let out another tired sigh, while a pair of golden orbs floated behind him. Click a brief light flashed behind him. His heart stopped for a moment before it went at max speed. Wah! Midoriya jumped forward, almost activating full cowl on accident and hitting his head on the ceiling. He looked around with eyes wide and a hand on his chest, his breathing unsteady and ragged. That's when he saw what he thought that was the shadow of before, illuminated by the light of the smartphone it was holding. Ashido from all people just stood there, looking at Midoriya with a face devoid of emotions and pointing her phone towards him. It took Midoriya three clicking sounds to realize that Ashido was taking pictures and some more time to react properly and cover his already red face. Ah, Ashido-san, what are you doing here? Did, did you just take a photo of me? Wow, was her response as she looked at her phone, apparently ignoring the flustered, almost naked boy in front of her. Ashido-san. Huh? Oh hey there muscles. She waved at him with a suspect smile on her face, from what he could tell given the lack of light. He just ignored the sudden nickname and tried to calm down while he kept inquiring on the acid girl. Ashido-san, when did you get here and why? Oh, I sneaked out of the dorms when no one was looking, and, and, I came here, for you, Dar, Ling. Oh shit, not again, why does the light switches and the doorknob look like they melted away? Oh that, I used my acid on them. Thought so, anyway, why are you here, Ashido-san? I told ya already, 
she walked up to him, which made Midoriya back off with each step she made, until his back reached the wall of the showers and Ashido quickly pinned him on the wall. She leaned closer to him, feeling his breath brush her face. I came here for you. By that you mean? Yes, that's what you're thinking. You are not so innocent after all this time with your Araka, right? She could practically see the blush increasing on his face, even though she couldn't see it in the dark. Ashido san look, I have to say something to you. I know that. Yeah, I know, I forgive you, I'm totally good with your Araka. Wait, how did you know that? Toru told me you came to talk with her. S, she told you that? Yeah, and after some thought I decided that I should do the same. You know me, I cannot be mad at someone for very long. Did did she say anything else? Only that you were absolutely cute, but that I already knew from the start. I see. Midoriya let out a sigh of relief, thought he was still pinned to the wall. So Ashida went after him because Hagakure told her about what happened, at least the part where he explained things. But then why turn off the lights and why the pictures? Knowing her it could be a prank, a friendly way to punish him. Well, that thought instantly vanished when he felt the warm touch of her hand on his still wet chest. Ashido-san, what are you? Wow, your workouts really pay off, she said as she ran her hand over his chest, tracing his muscles with her fingers. Ashido, S-H-H-H, don't speak, she put a finger on his lips. Let's enjoy the moment before the emergency lights turn on. What? Sigh, so I let a small drop of acid on the cables. It will melt it soon, then the emergency lights turn on. Just keep silent, dear. Dear? Ashido kept exploring his body with her hands, feeling the muscles on his shoulders, then gently squeezing his arms, and then feeling his abs and the muscles on his back, always commenting on how hard and defined they seemed to be. And just like she said the emergency lights turned on, revealing the half-naked form of the pink-skinned girl. Before averting his eyes from her figure, Midoriya noticed that her clothes, or what was left of them, looked pretty ragged, like they had been burnt. She didn't move, just staring at the boy in front of her. Midoriya could feel her intense gaze on him, and he was completely lost in what to do. The only thing clear to him on his mind was that it was an awfully familiar situation, and it could end in only one way. Ashido-san, why are your clothes so, um, torn up? Hmm, let's see, it has something to do with my quirk. Can you imagine what happened? You lost control of your quirk? Pin-pon, you are right. Now, how did it happen? I don't have idea why. Here's a hint. It has something to do with a certain green-haired person. With a me? How can I have anything to do with it? Well, a certain someone had been on my dreams. Do you know what they were about? I think I have an idea. In that case, here goes another hint. As she said that, Ashido planted a kiss on his lips, startling Midoriya for a moment. Honestly, he was kind of expecting this and to think that his fail-proof plan failed after all that hard work thinking on everything just because Ashido made her move first. In the middle of the kiss, her hands once again ran freely all over his body, squeezing and caressing his muscles, while the girl leaned on him, lifting her right leg a bit and wrapping around his. She broke the kiss and looked straight at his eyes. Midoriya, on my dreams, you always appeared like that, barely naked, but the real you is way better than the one I imagined. And, what exactly happened on your dreams? He knew he didn't want to know, but he had to confirm his suspicions. She let out a small giggle. Let's say that they were hot. Really, really hot. Shit. You know, Midoriya, I kind of have a thing for guys who work out, and you are so hot. But T, there are other guys with much more muscle than me. I'm sure anyone from our class could be better. There's no point in coming after me. He tried desperately to talk her off of keep going with this. Yeah, maybe, but size isn't all that matters. Not that I have something against the other guys, but... She then started to count on her fingers as she said the names. Kaminari Aoyama, Takoyami and Todoroki don't exactly fit in the definition of ripped, Bakugu and Kirishima are too loud, Ojiro and Ida are way taller than me, Shoji and his extra arms are kinda weird, 
Rikido and Koda are big, but I'm more into definition, Siro could be the slender man and Minta is totally out of question. This is a very picky list. Sure, which leaves only one option left. I don't think this is a good idea, Ashido-san. You can call me by my first name, though I really wanted to hear honey from you. I, I, I'm your Araka's boyfriend, so... Yeah, yeah, whatever, she'll have to forgive me. Shame is on her for exhibiting her man like that. Ashido removed the towel wrapped around Midoriya's waist and almost instantly reached for his half-erect member, making the green-haired teen gain a red tinge on his face. She glued her body on his, making it almost impossible for Midoriya to move without rubbing himself against her. She could feel his heart beating fast as she pressed against his chest. His eyes were closed and his head turned to the side, focusing all his efforts and will in resisting to her teasings. Ashido stroked his now hard member faster, making the boy gasp as he tried to hold back his moans, which only encouraged her to keep going. She couldn't get enough of his flustered face. But he wouldn't just sit around this time. If he needed to, Midoriya would use his strength to get out of her hold. And so he did, grabbing Ashido by her right wrist. My Midoriya, relax, I won't bite. Ashido-san, we shouldn't do that. Come on, don't be so stubborn. Midoriya used his free hand to push her back a little, but she held him by the wrist too struggling to get closer as he tried to keep her away and break free from her hold. The more he resisted, more strength Ashido used, but the difference between them was pretty clear as she was having a hard time trying to get close to Midoriya again. Ashido tried desperately to move the arm she was holding away so she could lean on his chest again, but Midoriya held it in place, still red-faced from being this close and naked in front of a girl, which made him close his eyes. All of a sudden, Ashido let his wrist slip from her grasp, and then his hand kept moving, hitting Ashido straight on her face with a loud slap. Shock took the place of shame on Midoriya's face as he looked speechless at the pink-skinned girl in front of him, a light lavender mark on her right cheek. Ashido seemed pretty much shocked too as her efforts to grab him and overall movements ceased. He let go of her arm as if it was a hot iron bar. A Ashido-san, it wasn't O on purpose, really, IDD didn't mean to hit you. She still didn't move for a whole minute until she brought a hand to her sore cheek, lightly touching it, and then Midoriya noticed a purple blush making its way on her face. She slowly brought her other hand to his lower parts, gently caressing him. Her eyes were not focused directly on him, as if she was shy or something. Midoriya again. Again what? Hit me. I, I didn't hear you. H hit me. What? Ah, Shido-san, it's hard to focus when you are. Hit me, Midoriya. W what? Hit you. Why? She faced him again and slammed her other hand on the wall right beside his head, making him recoil a bit. I don't know. I don't know why, but I always dream with you. And this tone chest, and those rock-solid arms, spanking my rear like I was a bad girl. Hit me, Midoriya. But I can't. Hit me already, damn it. Acting on instinct, Midoriya's hand moved and slapped her butt, earning a gasp and a moan from the pink-skinned girl and a sultry look directed to him. Again. He slapped her again and once again she moaned, this time a little bit louder. Bit by bit her face filled with happiness and lust. He didn't know why, but he kept doing it. Her shorts were pretty torn up from the acid, and so were her pants, which allowed him to make contact directly with her skin, and he kind of liked the sound it made when he slapped her butt. That, and the noises Ashido made. Her expressions would turn into a mix of surprise, slightly in pain, and also pleasure, wincing every time he hit her. Curiosity got the best of him and Midoriya inclined his head forward a bit and just as he suspected, a faint lilac mark in the format of his hand was taking form. Wait, what the hell am I doing? I should get out of here, not get into her game. When Midoriya realized that he immediately tried to run away, even lacking his clothes, but as he moved Ashido held him and pushed him back. 
The wet floor caused her to slip, bringing him down to the floor with her, and of course they ended in a very compromising position, with Midoriya hovering over Ishido, his hands on the sides of her head. Oh my, I didn't knew you were so straightforward. I, it wasn't on purpose. I know silly, you are so pure, Midoriya. Quite as everyone says that. Everyone? Hmm, so Uraraka wasn't the only one, huh? He froze for a minute, failing to hide his shock from the girl under him. Letting out a frustrated sigh, he silently nodded. Wow, you are full of surprises, muscles. Who else got down with you? Momo-chan? Tsu? Someone from another class? Tsuyu. Also, Kayoka and Toru. Eh? Toru too? He nodded positively again. Then I'm late for the party. What did Yuraraka said about that? The silence coming from Midoriya gave her the answer. You didn't tell her yet? Well, no. I wanted to solve things first, but you all girls only make it harder. I just wanted to talk and say I'm sorry, not have a taste of everyone's intimate parts. Wow, now we're talking. Don't hold back on me, muscles. I want to see stars too. Ashido-san, I'm not eating you tonight. Midoriya, you even talk dirty like that? You have to do it with me now. On a surprise move, she flipped him over, and now she was on top of Midoriya's lap, looking at him with eyes full of lust as she l-iked her lips. Guess I'll have to convince you then. Without waiting any longer, Ishido got down on his legs and started to stroke and lick his member, instantly earning moans from the boy. She didn't waste much time teasing him and shoved what she saw into her mouth as ucking it and bobbing her head at a fast pace, which made Midoriya let out some grunts as he tried to resist her. She increased her speed, sending Midoriya almost over the edge. He was focusing to not let his body take over control of his mind, but Ashido proved to be a really tough opponent. Shit, Ashido-san. She backed off from his member briefly. Midoriya slapped me again. Unable to think straight, he did as she said, slapping her face lightly, but with enough force to leave a stinging sensation which only made her more aroused. Ashido heard about that kind of thing, and at first she found it the weirdest thing in the world. How could someone like being harmed, even if slightly? But on her dreams, Midoriya did that and many other things to her, and every time she would wake up covered in sweat and acid, with the place between her legs soaked and hot. She lost many pajamas in this way, and she had to release all that tension. On Midoriya's head, he felt bad for doing this again behind his girlfriend's back, but he couldn't stop. Ashido moaning on his member while she has ucked it, and the lustful face she had as she looked at him were taking all his attention, making him forget about the rest. He was enjoying it way too much, and each time it happened he cared less about it, but still felt guilty. Why does it feel so good when he slaps me? He's hitting me lightly, but it still hurts a bit, and it gets me so turned on. His body, his muscles. Midoriya, you are so hot I think I'll get burns. Ashido ripped off her torn-up clothes and started to run her fingers over her private parts, sliding one finger in, then two, and then three. Looking at his red face and being hit by his hands, it all was throwing her over the edge of her sanity. Had she known Midoriya could get her to feel like that earlier, she would be totally over him from the first day on. Too bad that now he had a girlfriend, which meant she needed to make the most of this moment with him. And so she felt something different. His member twitched a bit inside her mouth, and the boy seemed extremely focused in holding something, so she guessed he was near his limit. Good thing because she was also feeling something building up inside her. I, I'm close to Mina. Hearing he using her first name surprised her. She felt very happy as it was a sign they were closer than before. Heck, if sucking his member wasn't a signal of closeness, then she didn't know what was. When Midoriya came, his hands moved on their own, holding Mina's head in place as he unloaded his seed deep inside her mouth. The insane amount almost choked the pink-skinned girl, but the lack of air ended making her feel even more turned on. The greenette was always full of surprises, she thought. After swallowing what she could and take a minute to catch her breath, she sat on Midoriya's lap with her hands on his chest, 
feeling the up and down of his muscles as he breathed heavily, her eyes never letting go of his reddened face. Midoriya slowly opened his eyes, meeting with her, a sultry look still present on her face. She wasn't done yet. As a smile crept into her lips, Mina rocked back and forth on his lap, letting out low moans as she rubbed her wet part against his body. This is way too stimulating for me. Suddenly, Midoriya sat up, almost knocking Mina to the floor, but he held her by under her arms, getting up with her and laying the girl on one of the benches that stood between the lockers. Mina wasn't expecting this reaction from him, neither the mild rough treatment he was giving her, since he just dropped her, making her head hit the bench with some force. Not that she didn't like it, on the opposite. Midoriya hovered over her, his fierce gaze focused on her eyes while she eagerly waited for his next move. She let out a yelp when she felt his hand touch one of her jugs, squeezing and twisting it. Immediately her face gained a purple hue and her heart beat faster. The green-haired teen then lowered his head and started to s -uck at the base of her neck, making Mina wide her eyes in surprise. He then trailed down to her bosom sucking at her while he still fondled with the other on his hand. Mina had never felt something like this. He was driving her crazy from pleasure, and she could feel her getting even more hotter and wet. She tried to squirm her legs together, but his knee was in the way. Noticing her moves, Midoriya let go of the bosom he was holding, changing to s ucket while he reached for her nether regions, running his fingers in circles over her private parts and then sliding one finger in, which made Mina gasp and moan louder. Her hands reached for his back, lightly clawing his skin while she brought him closer to her, biting the base of his neck. Her eyes were shut tight and her body shivered as he slid his fingers in and out her wet part. Midoriya then got out of her hold and lowered himself to down her waist, L iking some of her juices while he kept sliding his fingers, which earned him some loud moans from Mina. He then stuck his tongue inside, using his hands to open her legs and lift them a bit, which allowed him to go even deeper. Mina was now screaming and moaning very loud, playing with her jugs and running a hand across his green locks, sometimes pressing his head against her. Ah, ah, Midoriya. Ah, ah, K keep going, yes, ah. Mina was on her limit, once again feeling hot as if she would catch on fire. She wrapped her legs around his neck, bringing him as close to her as she could, she arched her back a little, and then she came, shouting the name of the boy she was holding. As her juices flooded, Midoriya did his best to not let a single drop of it escape from his tongue, practically licking her clean. When he felt her hold on him get loose, Midoriya got up. He didn't want to reach this point, but Mina left him without options. It was either give her what she asked for and finish this already, or keep playing that game of teasing until she got tired of him, and by his previous experiences, it could take a lot of time. Anyway, it was over and once again Midoriya felt the worst boyfriend, no, the worst man in the entire world. But that line of thought stopped for a moment when he glanced again at the pink girl in front of him. Mina's expression was one of pure bliss, her eyelids half open and her mouth open in a wide smile. She was even drooling a bit. Her eyes seemed unfocused and she just laid there with her legs and arms hanging from the bench. For a moment Midoriya worried that he may have caused some kind of mental damage to the acid girl. Oh my god, did I break Mina? But she moved again, shoving away that possibility and allowing the greenette to release a relieved sigh. Trying to keep his eyes away from her, Midoriya gave her a hand and helped her sit up, still dizzy from their small adventure. Her eyes focused again, and the next thing she did was wrap her arms the waist of the still-naked Midoriya, which made him try to push her away from him, to no avail. Mina, let me go already. No, I don't wanna. Mina, I have to go back to the dorms, you also have to go back. But then we won't get to do it again. That's the main idea. Did you forget that I still have a girlfriend? No. She let go of him and crossed her arms with her lips turned into a pout and her cheeks slightly puffed up. It's not fair, your Araka have you all to herself. That's one of the thing of being in a relationship. Humph. She just had a lot of luck that you got your eyes on her since the entrance exams. I bet I could get you to like me if I had tried. 
So are you planning to steal me from her? What? Of course not. I ain't that kind of girl. Besides, your Araka is one of my very best friends, I would never try to steal her man. Not that I would make it anyways. Huh? I mean just look at you now, Muscles. Tell me you didn't think about her at least once when you were eating me back then. Well I? You two are made for each other, I have to admit. Guess I was just jealous that your Araka got to find someone before me, and you from all people. But I always shipped you two together so. I, I don't know what to say. Would I love you Mina be too much to ask for? Yes, yes it would. She let out a light laugh and playfully punched him on his abs, getting up and resting her hands on her waist. I know, I know, but... She turned around and planted a quick peck on his lips, making him back off a little. I doesn't impedes me from saying that I love you, Midoriya. He blushed as he heard that, making her let out a small giggle. You must have heard that a lot, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You are so cute. But anyway, we should at least take a shower. I'm sure there are some spare training clothes around here. Ah, uh, did I just heard we taking a shower? Yes, I go by that way and you go to the girls' locker room. Midoriya pointed to the showers where he would take another bath and then pushed her towards the door. Mina playfully resisted and begged him to let her stay even stopping him by putting her foot on the wall. No, stop, someone could see me naked, ha 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 ha. It's just two meters to the other door, I trust you can do it. Please, muscles, ha 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 ha, what if they see me leaving the boys' locker room? This time Midoriya stopped pushing her and considered it for a moment. After that he turned her around and rested his hands on her shoulder as he looked at her in her eyes. Okay, but we have to make it quickly or else the rest of the class will get suspicions. Oh my, how long have we been here? He said as he trailed off, but Mina quickly brought him back by making circles with her index finger on his chest. Hey muscles, we have to hurry, unless you want to repeat our little session. Shaking his head, Midoriya headed to the showers with Mina right after him. Thought he stood at least seven showers of distance from her, Mina came closer, using the one right to his side. When he looked away, she gave him a quick slap on the butt, earning a squeak from the greenette, and when he turned around to say something about it, she just hopped into the same shower, standing millimeters away from him as the water washed away the soap from their bodies. You are very straightforward. What can I say? I'm just like that. After the shared shower and getting some spare training clothes, the two of them moved back to the dorms, sneaking up all the way to their rooms without being seen by the other students. Midoriya didn't want to explain everyone why he was using the hero training clothes, neither why Ashido was also using or the reason for they being together. After changing on his normal clothes, Midoriya let his body fall on his bed. Forget the plans, if he had to repeat the same thing with Yayorazu, so be it. The sooner he solved this problem between Yuraraka and the girls, the sooner he would be able to focus on the next one, a bunch of girls wanting a piece of him. She would not do it right. Yayorazu wouldn't be after me. I didn't expect any of them to do what they did but, not her, being raised in a high-class ambient and all. Not to mention she threatened to throw me at the nearest river. Extreme, yes, but comprehensible, given the shock from the situation she found us in. Still, I have this bad feeling that I'm going to get more surprises, which makes me seriously consider licking first and talking later. Oh boy, when did it become a course of action for me? How will I explain that to Uraraka? I'm already seeing it. Oh hey, I know we are dating and all, but I just got wild with the girls from our class. Yes, all of them, hope you don't mind. Shit, and I was worried because of my research. She's gonna freak out. What if she turned the Yandir switch? I'd rather face Kachin in a bad mood without my quirk. Come on, relax Midoriya, she's not a monster. All you have to do is keep calm and talk things out, like a sane and normal person. In the end, it could even strengthen our relationship. I had been severely tempted, but I kept loyal to her. Sort of... Lucky that no one dared to go further than, sucking my member. Ugh, it's embarrassing so say even if it's only on my mind. Midoriya sat at one of the couches of the common room, 
his hands put together in front of his face and his head lowered a bit as he kept in deep thought, oblivious to the movement around him, namely a floating yellow shirt and blue shorts that seemed to skip towards the place he was, leaning forward once it stopped behind the couch. The mumbling teen had his habit interrupted when he felt something cover his eyes, but he still could see things normally. Guess who it is? Hagakure san Huh? How did you know? I thought you were distracted mumbling. Your voice? Hagakure still seemed to fail at grasping the concept of being invisible. As she let go of him, Midoriya felt something land on his side, probably the girl jumping over the couch and sitting by his side. He then felt her arms wrap around his neck and the weight of her head resting on his shoulder. Thought he got a reddish hue on his face, he didn't overreact at the intimacy Hagakure was having with him. Maybe he was gaining some resistance. Midoriya, I never asked before, but can I call you by your first name? You don't mind, right? Since I already. I, I, I don't mind at all. She held him closer to her, and he could almost see the smile on her face. Izuku? What? Are you free tonight? Maybe? Then, do you want me to s uck your member again? Oh, you could like me this time, right? she said whispering on his ear, but the way she talked was as if it was the most common thing to ask someone. Ha Hagakure san, Midoriya whisper shouted. Bizuku, you can use my first name too. Titoru san then, we don't go around asking those things. I'm not asking around, I went straight to you cutie. Oh anyway we cannot do that. Why not? You're Araka. T that's why. Oh, so you can lick Mina clean, but when I ask you have your Uraka. The boy palled. Ashido told you. Yes, she told me. Sometime after I told her about our little talk, she came back saying a lot of things like how Midoriya was so ripped, the cute faces he made when we was flustered and his impressive hard on. Midoriya felt a pinch on his cheek. Humph, what does Mina have that I don't? It's just because you can't see my bosoms. Toru-san, someone could hear us. If they don't, will you get down on my bed with me? Are you still thinking about? What's up with the noise? Oh, hey, their muscles. Ashido just walked into the room and spotted her favorite green-haired boy and ran up to him. Ashido-san? She playfully put a hand behind her ear, another on her waist, and leaned closer to him. Huh? What was that? Did I just heard someone being unnecessarily formal? Imina san what are? Huh? I didn't hear it? Mina, what brings you here? Midoriya said with a nervous smile, knowing this could not end well for him. Hmm, I was just going out for a shopping trip. Gonna call Toru and all, but since I found you here, what about repeating the dose you get me? She nudged him and winked, still oblivious to the third wheel present, until Toru manifested herself. Ahem. Excuse me, Mina, but if you want to have some quality time with Izuku, let me tell you that I got here first. Toru? Girl, I totally missed you there. Sorry. Well, it's really hard to notice me when you have only eyes for muscles here. Oh shit, right? You got down with him too? Um, at least can I have him after you are done? Now excuse me, are you really discussing that in front of me? Both girls looked at the flushed boy between them and just shrugged. You telling me you don't want to? Yes. Really, Izuku? Yeah, really. But Mina put her arm around his neck, getting very close to his face and running her finger around his chest. If it was Yuraraka asking, then you would do it without thinking twice, am I right? Why, yes, but she's my. We know that, you made it very clear. My point is, you want to go wild, but you don't want to do that with us. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Mina then threw her arms up in a dramatic fashion. Oh, what a cruel world. This sexy and stunning cinnamon roll of sunshine just waiting to be taken, and we cannot because the mean girlfriend told him so. Mina, are you really implying that we could, you know, share? The pink girl turned around with a sly grin, one eyebrow raised and her hands on her waist. You don't want to? I know that he can handle more than just one of us, so I'm trying to think in everyone. Everyone? Who else he had? That's it. I'm calling Kayoka and Sue. 
Toru, hold him please, dear. Oh, they too? Toru said already trying to climb on top of the panicking team. Oi, who's calling me and for what, huh? D. Deku? Kayoka just entered through the door and her eyes feel on the green-haired teen with a set of floating clothes over him and Mina reaching for her phone. Speaking of the devil, Kayoka, come on, we're going to get down in bed with muscles. We? We are? No, we are not, Toru, let go of me. Hello, Tsu-chan? Oh yeah, I'm doing fine, are you busy now? You are at the pool. Oh, we just got around Midoriya and thought about having some fun. Don't need to stutter, he got me too. Yeah, practically everyone in fact. If you don't mind sharing. Oh, you are coming right now. Okay, just give me a sec. Hey guys, do you know a good place to go and, you know, do stuff? My room is soundproof. If we move things a bit, there's plenty of space. Kaioka-chan, are you sure about that? I don't like to brag, but we did it right after dinner, and boy I was being loud. The purple-haired girl scratched her cheek, looking away with a slight blush on her face. Okay, you heard the girl too. Don't get late. With that Mina ended the call and looked at the paralyzed teen at the couch, still under Toru, with the eyes of a tigress hunting its prey. Not only her, but Kayoka, and he was sure Toru too. Well then, muscles, shall we do it? she said between giggles. As soon as she heard from the pink girl, she felt completely embarrassed and ashamed, but it soon turned into a weird kind of relief and then into a burning sensation between her legs. Tsuyu didn't waste time and got out of the pool and, I'm going to believe her phone is waterproof jumping from the floating bed she was on and quickly swimming to the edge. She barely dried herself and didn't even bother to change from her bikini. She wouldn't be using clothes anyway. The idea of sharing the green-haired teen between them all seemed pretty overwhelming at first glance, but on second thought it was a great opportunity to at least get another taste of Midoriya. She rushed to the dorms and came in time to see Mina, Toru and Kayoka holding said boy by his arms as they dragged him upstairs and the boy fought against them desperately. In the middle of that chaos Mina spotted the frog girl and called for her help. Tsu, glad you showed up, girl. We need an extra pair of arms here. She was quick to get behind Midoriya, who was standing still by planting his left foot on the wall near to the stairs and in an actually dirty trick started to tickle the poor boy, who couldn't hold much longer before his strength vanished and he teared up in laughs. Aha ha, ha ha, T Tsu Chan, T that's really low, S H shit, ha 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 ha. With that opening, the group of girls quickly reacted, and each of them held him by his arms and legs, effectively lifting Midoriya and carrying him to Kayoka's room. He wriggled around, trying to get free, but they kept tickling him. Between some tears and laughs, he spotted the door of Kayoka's room and his eyes widened, becoming even more desperate. W wait up girls, time, pause, we cannot do us something like that. Nonsense, of course we can. I trust you can handle us pretty well, Ribbit. It's not like you never did it before anyways. Kayoka-chan, Kayoka-chan. Did you know I'm the only one Izuku didn't eat out? No shit. I know, right? What is happening here? The group of girls stopped in their tracks right in front of Kayoka's room. They slowly turned their heads around and found out the last person they wanted to meet right now. The brunette had a confused look on her face and her head tilted to the side, trying to make some sense out of the situation before her eyes, her friends carrying her boyfriend as a prize from a hunt. Oh, Ochako-chan. They all suddenly got wide smiles on their faces and let go of Midoriya as if he was a hot piece of iron, letting the poor boy fall on his back with a thud. Yuraraka ignored the slightly forced smiles and went to the main part of her confusion. Um, girls, why were you carrying Deku-kun like that? Oh, um, girl, you don't know what happened. Midoriya here was at the gym, and he was lifting so much weight he ended hurting his muscles. He what? Why, yeah, Mina had seen it, and she called for help so we could bring him here. Really, Toru? It's hard to believe since he's always so careful with his routines. Are you still hurt, Deku-kun? I, I, I'm better now, the girls helped me a lot. But, 
Why are you here? His room is on the other side. We thought about asking some help for Momo Chan Ribbit. Wasn't she on the library? Oh, so that's why she didn't respond when we called out. Well, since you are here, we'll leave him to you. You have your gravity quirk after all. Let's go, girls. We have that thing to do at that place. Kayoka, wait, I don't. They all quickly fled from the scene, leaving Yuroraka alone with an red-faced Midoriya, still tense from the meet with destiny he barely avoided. She turned back to him with a sincere concerned face, ready to use her quirk on him. Do you want me to take you to the infirmary, Deku-kun? No, there's no need. I bet some rest will do. Plus, recovery girl would be mad at me for exaggerating. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. I know this is important for you, but just take care, okay? She said as made him practically weightless and lifted him in her arms as if he was a bride, carrying the embarrassed teen to his room. Around the corner and out of her vision, four girls stood against the wall, some letting out relieved breaths while other bit at their finger or at the hem of their shirts, regretting the lost opportunity. And unknown to any of them, the last piece in this crazy puzzle heard everything that had been said. She had her suspicions during the last weeks, and when she saw Atsuyu running around in a swimsuit, Yairazu knew something was up. Apparently Midoriya had a hidden talent for the art of deceiving so it was up to her to put an end on this madness. Midoriya walked across the corridors, heading towards the exit of U.S. main building. He wanted to get to the dorms right after class ended, but he was on duty to clean the classroom today, plus he was paired up with Tsuyu, who kept trying to tease him. Not only that, he even bumped into Toru and Mina, having to escape from them using his full cowl. The brief moment at lunchtime replayed again and again on his mind. Midoriya, there's something I need to speak with you. Meet me after class on my room, that's what Yayorazu said to him. Ida, who was the only one besides him at the time, thought that she wanted to talk about his opinions on a new method of studying that could benefit the students of class 1A. Midoriya hardly believed it was the case, thought he hoped his friend with glasses was right. Some time ago he would try to not draw attention at all, but after what happened yesterday with the other girls, he felt that things would get much worse if he kept delaying it, and Yairazu even made it easier for him, calling him out to talk with her. Whatever her objective was, it would have to wait as he was going to pass through that door and say all that was on his mind, leaving no openings for misunderstandings or crazy girls over him. All that determination melted away once he reached her door. Standing still in front of it, Midoriya had to breath in deeply before he knocked on the wooden door. Seconds later it opened and Yairazu greeted him with a neutral face. He got inside her almost completely filled room and sat on a chair once signaled for him. Taking a seat in front of his, which was slightly higher so she kinda looked down at him, Yairazu started to speak. Thanks for coming, Midoriya. Now, the reason that I called you here is that I wanted your opinions about a new system that we are planning to implement and help our class excel at studies Midoriya nodded, paying attention to everything she said. It wasn't as he planned, but on she got done with that it would be his time to speak. Your opinion was that we should focus more on solving questions, thus helping to remember the basis of every problem. That's what you have to say if and when Ida question you. Wait, what? I'm not dumb, Midoriya, and neither are you. We both know why I called you here, a serious tone appeared on her voice. Midoriya, on the other side, seemed more at ease. She was making this so much simple. Oh, good to know. You see, there had been some time since I wanted to discuss this and... This is not a discussion, Midoriya. If you feel like you can think of this as a trial... Anyway, I'm going to talk and you are going to listen, and only when I say you will answer. Midoriya got taken aback with the severity in her eyes, but decided to play it cool and enter her game. She breathed in and started, her gaze never leaving his figure. In the past weeks, not only you got into a relationship with Yuraraka, you two went way off the limit and engaged into libidinous acts, repeatedly. While I cheer for your relationship, I cannot let that last part slip. The only reason I didn't warn any of the teachers or the principal is solely because this could pretty much get you two expelled, 
not to mention the harm for the public image of both. It would be wise of to you to keep that in mind. Thanks for that, by the way. I know it's messed up, but I'm not done yet. Once again, she cut at him with that authoritary tone of her. It was starting to get on his nerves. But you didn't stop on that. Some time later me and the other girls had see you two doing that right in front of us. She knocked us out and tied us, Midoriya. I know it was extreme, but she just, still speaking. After that, you assaulted Asui and Hagakure. Now wait just a second, that was an accident. I didn't say you could talk, Midoriya. Why are you trying to play the judge role here? I'm not judging anything yet, and I make the questions. Now you can talk. Have you been involved in those illicit acts with other girls? I, um, answer Midoriya, yes or no. You see, actually, there's some story behind that, and I don't need to remember you that as a hero we all should be truthful, do I? I, well, okay, yes, I did. Midoriya lowered his head and ran his hands on his hair, feeling the pressure Yayorazu was putting over him. Who were they? Huh? The names? Who were the girls that... That you, you know what? He had to summon an incredible amount of will to say it loud. Toru, Su Chan, Kayoka, and Mina, in that order. He just waited in silence for her next question, guilt consuming his insides as he could feel her burning gaze digging a hole at him. After a moment longer than he expected, he slowly lifted his head and his eyes met with Yayurazu, her face really near his and with a desperate expression. Her hands reached for his shirt and held it with force, and then she started to shake him back and forth while she lashed at him, the tone of her voice a mix of anger, fear and confusion. Why did you do that, Midoriya? Are you insane? Do you want to be expelled or you just can't control your damn hormones? Yayarazu-san, calm down. Calm down? Do you realize what you just spoke out loud? Don't ever try to order me around. She was practically freaking out and Midoriya had to do something. He held her by her wrists, gentle but firmly, and looked straight at her eyes as he talked. Yayarazu, shut up just for a minute and let me talk. Yes, I know pretty well that I had done, and I'm the one that regrets it the most, trust me. But it wasn't all my fault either. Ask any of them, what I wanted was to sort things out, but turns out suddenly everyone got a liking for me, and they were all too curious about how it felt to be in your Araka's place. That's what happened. No, they wouldn't do something like that. The girl was in conflict between crying or not. I thought so too, but they did, that's a fact. And another fact is that everyone liked it, even me. You can't just go around and get with every girl that comes by you. Don't you have a single drop of shame? I do, for the sake, you talk like I wanted to do it the entire time. Midoriya, you just did you just swear? Sorry if I'm not in the best mood, but you got me on the edge. All the girls got me on the edge, to be honest. Yayurazu felt silent, looking at her expensive carpet for a moment. I cannot let you keep doing these lewd things with everyone. I don't plan to do it either. He was more calm now and he felt that she also put out some of her anger outside. I also cannot let you keep going like that with your Araka. What? Why? Why? Here's the question. Why was she so mad at them being together like this? Was it because she was the vice class rep? Or because they were still under legal age and in high school? She couldn't blame him because she knew from the start that he didn't hurt your Araka, neither made her do anything. Apparently, it was the other way around. Even then, she had pretty good reasons to want to stop them, but still, it wasn't the cause of all her outrage. So why? Why did she bother so much? Yeah, Yurazu. Um, it's really funny to say this, but you are kind of muttering. She? Muttering? Somehow she got herself in the same habit of Midoriya. So, did he hear all that she was thinking? Yeah, most of it. The now flustered girl got up, a light red blush taking place on her face. I, I, I was just thinking out loud. I mean, I really think that way, but it's okay, I know how it is, he said as he scratched the back of his head. 
Even after her terrible acting as a superior person and her freak out, he still held that warm smile of him. That smile, it always managed to cheer her up, even when everything seemed to be wrong. It was just who Midoriya was. Yes, he was just like that, warm, bright, reliable, cute in a way that only he could manage to be. Not to mention his boldness and willing to fight and save others, no matter how impossible the problem seemed. All that while he kept that smile. When did she started to look at him like that? Maybe after being tied and forced to witness his moment of intimacy with Uraraka. No, she could just have turned away, closed her eyes. She wanted to see everyone wanted, based on what he said earlier. All her life she was taught that she should work hard to be an example, a model of a student, a woman, and now a hero. And she felt proud of it, she felt proud whenever she was able to match her friend's expectations. But she found Midoriya even more impressive, because time and time again he went beyond the expectations, surpassing his limits and becoming stronger. Always with that smile on his lips. He said that he wanted to be a cool hero that saved the others with a bright smile on his face. Someone capable of that, despite all the problems that might appear, that someone was a really awesome person. One worth to receive only the best, but here is Midoriya in front of her and having to stand her while she played the role of model student. Shell felt that she had to be the mature one, but at the very end she was being childish, so the more mature thing to do would be face the true. Sorry, Midoriya. Huh? What for? I think that I should. No, you don't. You don't have to apologize. I was. I wasn't honest with you, Midoriya. What are you talking about? You are right, I can't go around sticking with every girl that happens to have a thing for me. Yes, but the reason I said it is that I don't want to see you with another girl. The points started to connect on his mind. He had seen this before. Oh no, oh hell no. Not only the other girls from the class, but Yoraka too. I, I think I felt envy of you two together. Yeah, Yorazu san I appreciate that you are opening up for me, but... I think we should leave it like that for today and... Midoriya, she held him in place by his shoulders. He instinctively stiffened as she touched him. Midoriya, I, I... Please, don't. What? Please don't say it. I know what it is, but please don't say it. I, I don't get it. Midoriya, I just think that... It will sound harsh, but I don't want to hurt your feelings, really. It's just that I cannot hear it again. I think my mind will break if I hear that again. Whenever a girl says that to me, it doesn't end well. Yayurazu now had a more determined face in place of the one of confusion that had been present. She felt challenged by the green-haired teen in front of her. Oh, you mean it? Is that how it happened with the others? Your next line is going to be Midoriya, I think I love you. And that simple word will seal away yours and my common sense, because that's how it works. That's what happens, every, single, time, and I really don't know why. Didn't it pass by that brilliant head of yours that this happens because it's true? What is true? Midoriya, I think I love you. You kidding me, right? As if I could at a time like this. Come on, I have enough girls to deal with already. Then forget about them. The one in front of you is me. Why yayayurazu san what about being the model student? You are the best of our class, so. Midoriya, dear, I'm a woman before all things, and as such I also have some urges and needs. You understand that, don't you? After all, you had been so helpful with the other girls. Yayurazu held him again and brought him closer to her, spinning around and shoving the teen on her king-sized bed. She slowly climbed on it, loosening the tie at her neck. She had that familiar yet new look on her eyes. They all got like this before they went wild over him, and yet every single one of them was different, unique. He could swear he saw Yayurazu lick her lips as she rested her hands on the sides of his head. A lustful smile formed on her mouth. You know, Midoriya, you said a lot of things, some of them really harsh. That's no way to treat a lady, and I can't just let you go around with manners like that. So... She leaned in closer to his ear and whispered, I have to teach you a lesson. This scent shivers down his spine. 
Something clicked on her head and Midoriya didn't feel it would be good for him. Yayurazu undid her ponytail, letting her long black hair fall over her shoulders, gently brushing the red face of Midoriya under her. Her onyx eyes focused on every detail of his face, the color of his lips, his freckles swimming in a sea of red, his bright green eyes that looked everywhere but to her. She smirked as she slowly unbuttoned the first buttons of her uniform, revealing some of her ample bosom. A very quick and involuntarily glance allowed Midoriya to see a thin line of black laces, giving the boy a hint on Yayurazu's choices of intimate clothing. First lesson. Always stay focused on the girl you are with. She has to know you are interested in her. The next moment she cupped his chin with one hand and locked him into a deep kiss, closing her eyes and moaning very low as Midoriya had his eyes pretty wide. After a minute or so she parted lips with him, leaving a small trail between them. She surely had his attention now. Second lesson manners. You shouldn't touch a girl if she doesn't allow you to do so. Always be gentle. Also, it's very polite to let the ladies go first. Her hand opened his uniform shirt and then traced a beeline down to his waist where she started to pull his pants down. Midoriya reached for her hand, trying to restrain her from going further, but Yayurazu quickly gave him a slap, earning a surprised yelp from the greenette. Ah, 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 no touch, Midoriya. She waved her index finger in front of his face. Her hand moved back to his waist, and in a single move, she pulled his pants and underwear down, exposing his half-hard member to view. She looked at it for a second with lustful eyes and then turned her intense gaze to Midoriya, making him bury himself a bit on the mattress. She then started to rub her hand on his member, getting it completely hard and increasing Midoriya's heartbeat rate. Rubbing turned into a full grasp and slow stroking, always slow and steady, making this a battle of endurance for the teen. Her eyelids were half-closed and she had a grin on her mouth, clearly enjoying teasing Midoriya this way. She liked the way she could make him do noises or shudder, depending on how she touched him. Yayurazu really liked being in control of the Midoriya Izuku. It made her entire body feel hot, and she was losing herself in his green eyes whenever she managed to see them, that is. Third lesson. You must, at all times, listen to what a girl says, pay attention to every word. Midoriya, your eyes are not on me. Yayurazu held his member again and started to stroke it really fast, quickly bringing him to his limit. But when she felt him twitching, she let go of him and just looked at his reddened face. Thought he tried to hide it, there was some expectation on his expression, and that made her even happier and hot. She could manipulate him just that easily. What is it, Midoriya? Did you want me to finish? Oh, I bet you wanted. She leaned closer to his ear again, nibbling on it before she whispered to him, You won't come unless I tell you to, got it? And on instinct he nodded. This side of her was creeping him out, and still his boner never faded. Where was I again? Oh right, now, let's practice how well do you listen. She sat up, still on top of him, but giving him enough space to sit up too. She gave him that sultry smile again. Take off my shirt. What? Do I need to repeat myself? She threatened him by moving back and forth on top of him, and Midoriya quickly understood where this was going. So he sat up and, with much hesitation, undid the remaining buttons of her shirt and took it off, revealing her huge round jugs. He averted his gaze, but Yayurazu held his head with her hands and gently made him look at her. What was the first lesson again? Stay focused on the girl I I'm with. Correct. You are such a good boy, Midoriya. Let's make it this way. If you do well, I'll give you a very special reward. Answer wrong, and you get to be punished. P punished. Don't worry, you just have to answer right. Was it some kind of game to her? Every cell of his body was telling him that he didn't want to answer wrong. Now, Midoriya, can you describe the vision you are getting? Don't spare the details. I, uh, I, why your bosoms are pee pretty, pretty. Yes? Pretty big, and they seem really, really smooth. Oh, is that so? Why don't you check for yourself? Huh? Midoriya, take of my clothes. But, Midoriya. She looked at him seductively, 
but at the same time she had a seriousness in her eyes that made Midori sure that she wasn't taking a no for answer. Never before had he felt so pressed, not even when he and Kachin had to face all might in the hero training. Yeyurazu had him on her hands. Speaking of hands, his had reached to her back, and while she lifted her long hair to help him a bit, he undid the clip of her clothes, removing it from her body and setting free her huge mounds to jiggle right in front of him. He got himself caught up in that vision for a moment. That's a lot of staring. Sorry. No, you are acting just perfectly, giving your undivided attention to me. And since you are such a good boy, I'll give you your reward. He didn't have any time to wonder what it was. The next moment Yoyorazu wrapped her arms around his head and back and buried his face on her valley, holding him close to her as his face got red like Kirishima's hair. You said they looked smooth? Can you feel them? Are they as nice as you imagined? His mind was racing both with her totally different and kinda aggressive behavior and the thought of throwing away the last drops of restraint within him and let her have him. That said, she was more than right. Her huge bosoms didn't only look, they were smooth like anything he had touched before. Thinking just a bit about it, they kind of reminded him of Yuraraka, just bigger and maybe more firm. But that had yet to be confirmed. What the hell am I thinking? I shouldn't be comparing them. He didn't know if she had a mind-reading quirk too, but she slowly pushed him away and ran her hands on his arms until she found his hands, taking them on hers and guiding them to her chest, which made Midoriya panic a bit again. I wonder, how do they feel compared to your Raka? You played with hers a lot, didn't you? I, I, well, um, yes. Can you tell me the differences then? Yours are, yours are, bigger and, they feel more firm when, when, when I squeeze them like that. Midoriya gently squeezed her jugs, feeling the warmth on his hands. Yayurazu closed her eyes and let out a low moan as he caressed her chest, but then she removed his hands, looking at him as if she was conflicted about something. Remember the second lesson? Then it hit him. Can, can I tea touch, your melons? Can I touch? Can I please touch your melons, Yayurazu? Though he said that out loud, he didn't manage to do it while looking at her, so he didn't see the large smile forming on her lips. Since you asked no nicely, remember to be gentle, okay? Right. Yayurazu put her hands behind her back and lifted her arms, showing off her bosom for him. Midoriya, very slowly, reached for her huge mounds and, like he did before many times, started to fondle with them, squeezing a bit and pinching, which once again made her moan, her eyes closed as she bit the bottom of her lips. He seemed to be lost in her flawless skin, in the warm feeling on his hands, but Midoriya returned to his senses when Yayurazu moved again, pushing him back on the mattress. She hovered over him, eating him with her eyes. Midoriya, pull off my skirt. Your skirt. Is this a no? No, I mean I'll do it. He quickly rushed his hands to hold her skirt, but he ended receiving another slap on his hand. Be gentle, remember? Right. Now much more slower, he held at the hem of her skirt, sliding his fingers under it while his thumb was outside, but he stopped on his tracks, looking at her hungry eyes before proceeding. Can I touch your legs, please? He could see her eyes shining with some kind of proud. Maybe she was happy that he was acting as she told him to do so. And if that was the way to get over with it, so be it. Yes, you can, Midoriya. Now, with permission, he slid her skirt out, running his hands over her thighs and feeling them shake a bit. She lifted her legs so he could remove her skirt with ease. Is she enjoying it that much? He also noticed something else. She was using black stockings instead of the standard socks from the uniform. The elastic in the hem lightly pressed against her thighs and the black color contrasted with her smooth and milky skin. Wow, she looks really nice in those. Wait, was she planning that from the start? Midoriya, can you caress my butt? As gently as he could, he reached for her rear running his hands in circles and giving some squeezes here and there, earning more moans from the black-haired girl over him. Something worried him, 
and that was the fact the the more he did what she said, more thirsty she looked, and the worst part, he was starting to get into her game too. It wasn't that bad to do as she said after all. He mentally punched himself because of that thought. Midoriya, take off my pants. He hesitated for a moment, but just like he did with her skirt, he removed her laced black pants, putting them together with her bra at the mattress. Yayarazu then sat on his lap, rocking back and forth a little before she said her next order. Midoriya, put your fingers in there. She pointed down to her crotch, with sultry eyes and biting her inner lip. Midoriya faked a confused face as if he didn't knew what she was talking about. I didn't get it. I know you did it a lot already with the other girls. Are you saying that you won't do it for me? He couldn't decide whether her voice sounded pleading or demanding. All he knew was that he had to do as she said if he ever wanted to get out of here, not that she was torturing him or anything on the opposite. Focus Midoriya, you have to get out. Having some experience, he knew what to do. Midoriya reached for her tights, running his thumbs in circles around her folds, earning moans from the girl on top of him. She closed her eyes and was biting one of her thumbs, as if she was trying to resist him teasing her. At some point she rested her hands on the mattress, slightly lifting her rear from his abs. Midoriya had an idea. Can I slide them inside, please? I inside? Yes, do it. He slowly slid his mid-finger inside her, making her shiver and moan lightly. He could feel her hot breath brushing his face. Since they came to that point, Midoriya didn't see a reason to not give her what the other girls gained. He was a fair guy, after all. Yayarazu, can I suck your bosoms, please? Is Zuck them? Did you do it with the others? Of, of course you did. Go on. And call me, ah, uh, call me by my first name. Yeah. She leaned on her elbows, allowing Midoriya to reach her huge, jiggling mounds, and he started to s uck her bosoms. This made Momo moan louder and pant a bit, feeling her entire body on fire. She couldn't believe that Midoriya made her feel like that, neither that he also made her friends feel this too. She was having a hard time focusing, and every time he slid his fingers inside her, she felt jolts of electricity run over her body. My Midoriya a l like me, HNNG. You want me to I mean, can I l like you, Momo? Yes, yes, do it, oh my ah. She quickly moved and sat on his chest, eager for him to start. She ran her hands across his green locks, caressing his head. Oh, Midoriya, you are such a wonderful boy. You are going to make me feel good, right? I'll, I'll do my best. The moment his tongue touched her, Momo widened her eyes, and she held on him with more force, making Midoriya wince at the light pull on his hair. When he started to lick her inwards, she went to a whole new level, practically screaming instead of moaning. Momo rocked back and forth on top of Midoriya, who slid two fingers inside her as he kept l iking her clean. Momo wasn't showing any signs of being tired or near her climax, which made him wonder how high was her limit. Ah, yes, K keep going, Midoriya, holy shit, she's almost as loud as Kayoka. My Midoriya, look ah, uh, look at me. From between her legs, Midoriya lifted his eyes to meet her gaze as she had her hands running across his green hair. She was panting heavily and her eyes seemed to be fogged by what he could only describe as complete lust. Damn, Momo was a thirsty girl. Yes, that's my good boy, you are so amazing, Midoriya ah, but I have to teach you. You can't ga, you can't do that haya ah, with other girls, so do it with me, learn with me. You only need to ah, do it with my body, ah, you are only allowed to do it with me. I'm all that you need, right? Oh my god, what the hell is she talking about? Midoriya! Momo shouted his name as she reached her climax. It was intense, she arched her back and held on his green locks. From his position Midoriya could see her eyes rolling up, and he felt her shake a bit. For the first time he had some difficulty drinking the juices of a girl, since Momo opened the floodgates on his face, not to mention that the way she held him in place made it a little bit hard to breathe. After apparently shutting down for almost a minute, Momo looked at the boy under her legs and gently run her hands on his cheeks, still panting. Midoriya, you are so incredible. 
Who's my good boy? I, I am? Yes, you are, you are my good boy now, since you was so good there. She lowered herself and touched the tip of his nose with hers. It's time for your reward. Our reward? Yes, dear. My good boy deserves it, don't you think? Momo positioned herself between his legs. Midoriya knew what was coming next. M. Momo-san, T.T., there's no need to reward me. Really, I mean, there's a lot I still need to learn and... Oh, Midoriya, you don't know how it makes me happy to hear you want to learn from me. I didn't mean that, actually. Don't worry, dear. Momo knows what's best for you, plus, it makes me wonder. Bubby, what do you have in mind? Hmm, is she really good at this? She? You mean, Yoraraka? Yeah, actually, all of them. I heard got to do it. If I remember well, I mean, we don't need to confirm that, right? Oh, but we have to. I want to be sure you are receiving only the best treatment. This way, her head got dangerously close to his crotch and Momo slid her right hand up his tight and rolling her slender fingers around his hard member. You will only need me, right? Before he could protest further, Momo started to lick his member, running her tongue up and down and sucking at the tip. Her eyes never left his face as she wanted to be sure he was enjoying what she was doing. He keeps restraining himself. Midoriya, you don't need to hold back. Give everything you got to me, you don't have to be with anyone else. You are my good boy, right? You like it when I teach you, right? You won't see any more girls, right? At first she was slightly unsure of what she was doing, Midoriya could tell, but she quickly learned how to control her reflexes and she was shoving most of his length inside her mouth. Momo held the base of his member and bobbed her head up and down, making sure to run her tongue around it and moaning, putting up a pretty intense show both for his eyes and body. Thought Midoriya tried, he couldn't help the sounds that escaped his throat. She really knew how to break his defenses, getting really near how he felt whenever it was Yororaka doing this. He really didn't want to say it, but damn Momo was good at that. And she kept looking at him with those eyes, those eyes full of lust and something else. It was enticing and strange at the same time, a weird mix of desire and an almost motherly look, the same his mother held whenever he was out to school or when he moved to the dorms at UA. And at that moment it occurred to Midoriya that maybe Momo wasn't in the best of her faculties, or that at least this was a new and unsafe side of her he didn't know about. Could it be that after all those years working hard to be the model student and all, she kind of snapped and developed a new lust-fueled trait of her personality? Well, he tried his best, but mumbling internally didn't help him with ignoring Momo sucking the life out of him. He was on his limit and she didn't show any signs of stopping right now. On the opposite, she sped up a bit, making it impossible for Midoriya to hold any longer. And Momo-san, I'm about to. He felt the energy of one for all gathering around his body once again, sparks flying. Every time with Yuraraka and with each of them, whenever he reached his limit and released his seed, his full cowl mode activated, something that still intrigued him and for whatever reason this allowed him to release immense amounts of the white sticky stuff, which was now filling the mouth of Momo and spilling a bit out of it, while she did her best to swallow it. After that she licked the few drops that she missed, her eyes always focused of his red face. You taste so good. Tea thanks, I guess. Did you like it? Well, I... Don't be shy, Midoriya, you can tell me. Sigh yes, Momo-san. It was... Awesome. More than your other experiences? I wouldn't compare it like that. Oh yeah, care to explain? It's complicated. Midoriya, make it simple. Explain to me, okay? She had that demanding tone in her voice again. Well, um, each, each one of you girls is different so, I don't know, every single one is different from the other. So it's like that? That sad look on her face. Was it disappointment? Yeah, it is like that. Both teens flinched once they heard a familiar voice coming from the door. As they slowly turned around, none other than Yoraka stood there, her arms crossed, a plain face with a small pout and an eyebrow lifted. Oh, don't mind me, please go on. I'm sure Deku-kun can keep on for a long time. 
Behind her, on the doorway some heads poked out, eyes focused at the naked couple at the king-size bed with mixed emotions on their faces. While Midoriya shut down and didn't respond for a while, Momo tried to speak, stuttering as she shook in terror. T this, this is not what, w what it l looks at i is, I can. Explain? Well don't worry about it Yayurazu san I have been watching for a while. Just a hint for the next time, double check the door lock, trust me, I have experience. I, I, I didn't, I mean, we just, um... Okay, relax, Yuraka held a friendly smile towards her naked friend as she walked to her and rested a hand on her shoulder. See, I told you he wouldn't harm me. She couldn't believe it. Yuraka not only caught her with Midoriya, her boyfriend, but also managed to do it in the same way she did before, with all the other girls, and the first thing she did was this. Seriously, Momo didn't have a single idea of what was passing on the mind of the brunette in front of her. So, finally letting go of the member she was holding, she slowly got up, reaching for a blanket to cover her front side, eyes still wide with shook and with some small tears forming on the corners, threatening to roll free over her red cheeks. Oh my, you Yuraka, I'm so, so, so sorry, I don't know what came to me, I... She got cut by a warm embrace from Yuraka. Was HHH, it's okay. I know it's pretty hard to resist his charms. What are you sob talking about? I tried to steal your, your... Yeah, you tried, but honestly you couldn't do it even if you were the sexiest woman in the world. What? Yayurazu, no, Momo-chan. Deku-kun loves me. He really loves me, and that's enough for him to ignore things like appearance and wealth. He loves me for who I am, and so do I for him. Still, I was, zucking his member, and I made him act like my, my. Oh, impressive. You really managed to get him into the game. Actually, it's not that hard. Ochako Mina was the first one to come out of her cover, slowly walking to her friends and fighting to avoid staring at the naked boy lying on Momo's bed. Once he gets all flustered and red, it's kinda easy to turn on his other side. Oh, really? It was pretty much it, Ribbit. I have to say, he really surprised me that time. Asui-san? Gyro-san? Yo. Hi, Momo-chan. Guess even you ended falling for him, Ribbit. No, I... Don't feel sad, Momo-chan. We all had been in the same place you are, literally. hagakure san I... I feel so ashamed. Momo looked down, but she felt Yuraraka put her hand under her chin, lifting her head up to look at her friends right in front of her. Hey, it's okay, we won't judge you, as if any of us could, they all nodded in agreement. But, what about you said earlier, that I couldn't steal him from you, I, I think I, love him, him, in the end you really felt jealous, even if a little bit Momo just nodded. Not only her, but all the other girls seemed a little bit shaken by those words, a reminder that Midoriya was still Yuraraka's boyfriend, and that it wouldn't change if depended of him. Surprisingly, Momo was the one to break the silence. I thought that, if I could get all his attention, if I could make him look just at me, then he wouldn't need to look at other girls. That's what I said to myself, but the reality is that I really wanted him to, to look at me the same way he looked at you, Ochako. I get it, and you all feel the same, right? Yeah, ribbit, sure, yup. Putting her hands together, and on the bridge of her nose, Yuraraka breathed in deeply, apparently in deep thought. Releasing her breath slowly, her eyes opened, and with a calm expression on her face, she made a proposal to her friends. What if I told you, that you all can kind of have Deku-kun? Surprise and confusion filled the minds of the group. No shit, you serious girl. Let me finish, Mina, I'm still thinking about it. Look, it's pretty clear that you all care for him in a very special way, but in the end, I'm still his girlfriend. The small excitement vanished as fast as it appeared. But, I'm also your friend, and I wouldn't want you to feel sad or thirsty. Anyways, I have an idea. I don't believe that I'm saying this, but what about we all? She had to make an effort right now, is share him. At this moment, everyone looked at Yuraraka as if she suddenly had grown a second head. Did she really propose to share Midoriya? 
Yes, she did, and between utter confusion and surprise, Momo was the first to speak, hope being all over her eyes. Do, do you really mean it? Well, uh, I wouldn't like seeing you guys sad like I said. Plus, since everyone here got a round with Deku-kun, I don't want to put up with competition, so I'd rather have y'all on my side, kind of. Ochako, you beautiful crazy girl, that's the most rad idea I heard of. Mina, are you really going to agree with this? You not, Toru? Just think about it. A chance to get down with muscles. Ha, huh, your own nickname for him? Guess you're already in then. You bet, Ochako? What about you too? Tsu? Kaioka? The two of them were taken aback both from the idea of the brunette and from Mina's overexcited reaction. But all in all their pink-skinned friend had a point. Some time with Midoriya was better than none at all. Well, since you put it that way, I have to join this mess. Ribbit, it does make things easier. Gee guys? Really? Hagakure felt a hand rest on her shoulder, and she found Yuraraka with a supportive look on her face. It's okay if you don't feel comfortable, Toru-chan. But let me remember you that there's plenty of Deku-kun for everyone. The invisible girl searched for the last source of common sense around Momo, but when her eyes laid on the black-haired teen, she found her with the tip of her thumb on her mouth, apparently deep in thought and mumbling something. But suddenly her head snapped up, and she turned to Yuraraka. Okay, I'm in. Eh? Momo-chan too. Well, after all that happened, there's no denying that I like him in this way. Plus, I know I'll feel horny again in the future. Girl, the future is now because I totally need to go around with him. Before Mina could jump at the bed, Yuraraka raised an arm, blocking her way, a more serious look on her eyes. Now, wait just a moment, Mina. There's still one person that has to agree with it. Yes, I'm in. I love Midoriya too. The group got startled with Toru's sudden outburst, but they quickly recovered from it. Well, I'm happy for you, Toru, but I was referring to Deku-kun. He's the one with the final word on that. Do you think he'll agree with it, Ochako? I'm not sure, Mina. I find it very difficult, Ribbit. But you always could, well, convince him, Yuraraka. I never tried to convince him of anything I wasn't sure he would do, Kaioka-chan. This time I really don't have a single idea of what he will do. Then we should just ask him already. And how should I say it, Momo-chan? Hey, Deku-kun, dear, since everyone got to suck your member, we all decided to make a huge harem. What do you think? Well, that's the dream of most boys. You know he's not like most boys, Mina. Yeah, I know, which only make things harder, is he still out? I guess the shock paralyzed him, Yuraraka said as she waved a hand in front of his face. Touching his cheeks with her hands brought Midoriya back to this plane of reality. Deku-kun, are you feeling well? Ochako? His head was spinning and his vision was slightly blurry, the only thing focused being Ochako's caring eyes and her pretty round face framed by her adorable brown hair. His brain started to restart and Midoriya tried to remake his steps. There was the class, and after that Yeyurazu called him to talk, he came to her room and... Oh shit! Oh oh Ochako, I can explain this, I... Wait, wait, slow down Deku-kun, I know what happened. No big deal, okay? But I... S-H-H-H, relax, breathe, and prepare yourself a bit. Um, how can I say it? I know that all the girls kind of got more intimate with you so. That was it. She was going to break up with him, he was sure of it. Midoriya braced himself for her words, thought he was sure he would break into a pool of tears once he got out of here with some damn clothes on, of course. We all decided to share you. Everyone loves you, Deku-kun. Um, congrats, you got yourself a harem, I guess. The nervous smile on her lips confused him. Was she joking with him at a moment like this, or was it a dream? If so, he hoped that the past weeks also had been a dream. Heck, even the first night when she got to his room could be a dream. Once he wake up, Midoriya would go straight to Ochako and confess his love for her, in front of everyone to make things easier. If she said not, so be it, 
but he felt much more confident after all this mental stress he passed by. That said, it didn't feel like a dream, and just to make things better, all the other girls from his class were there too, one of them only using black stockings and half covering her naked body with a blanket. Too much coincidence to be a dream. So, in other words, yes, the love of his life just said he gained a harem. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku And Had Harem? I hope you liked the video. A big shout out to Guy Number 23 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on Fanfiction. Net for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku Tuo for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.